Now, to demonstrate the characteristics of a reciprocating compressor in a system, let's observe the following simplified process scheme, including a reciprocating compressor. The red circles that you can see here represent pressure gauges. For this example, let's consider the following set of initial pressures. The suction pressure of the compressor is set at 20 psi. The pressure downstream the valve is at 110 psi. The pressure of the discharge vessel is at 100 psi. And the pressure upstream of the valve is set at 135 psi. And finally, the discharge pressure of the compressor is at 140 psi. Please note here that all these pressures are relative pressures and not absolute pressures. As seen in this example, these gauge pressures steadily decrease from the discharge of the compressor to the discharge vessel. At the initial conditions noted here, let's now assume that the compressor flow is 500 actual cubic feet per minute and that the brake horsepower is 250. The compression ratio based on the suction and discharge pressures as seen here is calculated this way. It is equal to the discharge pressure expressed in absolute pressure divided by the suction pressure of the compressor also expressed in absolute pressure. So here, since all the readings are expressed in gauge pressure, then we need to convert them into absolute pressure. The discharge pressure in our case is equal to 140 psi plus 14.7 to convert it into absolute pressure. The suction pressure is 20 psi plus 14.7 to convert it into absolute pressure. So, in our case, the compression ratio is equal to 4 Point forty-five. Okay, let's now plot the actual cubic feet per minute versus pressure ratio and the actual cubic feet per minute versus brake horsepower. In this example, the actual cubic feet per minute is 500 and the pressure ratio is 4.45. So, here you have your first operating point and for the brake horsepower we have 500 cubic feet per minute as flow and 250 brake horsepower. Let's now assume that the control valve in the discharge process system is slightly closed. With this action the pressure upstream of the control valve increases to 170 psi and the discharge pressure of the reciprocating compressor increases to 180 psi. The horsepower also increases to 300 bhp. So in your opinion what has happened to the actual flow in this case? So let's plot the new pressure ratio and brake horsepower to figure it out. First, we calculate the new pressure ratio. Recall, it is equal to the discharge pressure of the compressor divided by the suction pressure and both pressures must be expressed in absolute pressure. So here, the new ratio is equal to 180 psi plus 14.7 divided by 20 psi the suction of the compressor which remains unchanged plus 14.7 psi to convert it into absolute pressure. This new ratio is equal to 5.61. Now let's plot these two points on the two graphs. The new pressure ratio as a function of the flow, as you can see here, and the new brake horsepower as a function of the actual flow. Notice here that both pressure ratio and brake horsepower curves 
and essentially a vertical line. Observing these plots, the characteristics of any reciprocating compressor can be defined as follows. Reciprocating compressors deliver a constant volume, have a variable head capacity, and are not self-limiting. Not self-limiting means that the pressure ratio or the discharge pressure, as well as the brake horsepower, will continue to rise until the compressor case pressure is exceeded or the driver maximum horsepower is exceeded. To limit these parameters, a pressure relief valve is always required in a system incorporating any type of reciprocating compressor. The figure that you can see here depicts the exact same process as seen in the previous video. The only difference is that the reciprocating compressor is now replaced by a centrifugal compressor. Let's apply the same methodology as used in the previous video. We will use the same set of pressures, but the flow rate and horsepower will be larger than that for the reciprocating compressor. Since centrifugal compressors usually handle inlet flow rates above 5000 actual cubic feet per minute. So let's assume the inlet flow is 20,000 and the brake horsepower is 10,000. Let's plot the flow versus pressure ratio and the brake horsepower on the appropriate graphs. The pressure ratio here is identical to the previous example, since both the suction and discharge pressure did not change and so is still equal to 4.45. So the first operating points corresponding to these conditions are plotted as shown. Now let's assume again that the control valve in the discharge process system is slightly closed. This action causes the compressor discharge pressure to rise to 180 psi. The horsepower, however, decreases to 6000. Why is that? Because the characteristic performance curve of any centrifugal compressor is different from a reciprocating compressor. A reciprocating compressor curve is essentially vertical, since the actual volume flow is constant. This was discussed in the previous video. Therefore, the brake horsepower will increase as the pressure ratio does. In the case of a centrifugal compressor, increasing the pressure ratio will result in a lower compressor flow rate since the only way a centrifugal compressor can develop a higher pressure ratio is at a lower gas velocity. So, in other words, at a lower flow rate. Simply stated, the longer the gas is in contact with the centrifugal compressor blades, the higher the pressure ratio. For a centrifugal compressor, this means the flow rate must decrease. In order to see this on the graph, we need first to calculate the new pressure ratio. Recall, the pressure ratio is equal to the discharge pressure divided by the suction pressure and both pressures must be expressed in absolute pressure. So here, the ratio after doing the calculation will be equal to 5.6. Now, plotting the higher pressure ratio and brake horsepower points on the graph will yield a higher pressure ratio, a lower flow point, as depicted here. By observing these two curves, the characteristics of any centrifugal compressor are as follows. Keep in mind centrifugal compressors deliver variable volume flow, have a fixed head capacity, and are self-limiting. As opposed to a reciprocating compressor, the centrifugal compressor is self-limiting. It does not require a relief valve to protect the compressor and the driver. 
The next figure that you can see here summarizes the characteristics of reciprocating compressors and centrifugal compressors by presenting their typical performance curves. Okay, now before to finish off this video, what I really want you to understand here and to keep in mind is that reciprocating compressors are not self-limiting. This means that the discharge pressure will continue to rise until the compressor maximum case pressure is exceeded. On the other hand, centrifugal compressors are self-limiting. Their performance curves, as depicted here, show a decreasing head or pressure with increasing flow. Now, if you feel like you want to know more about centrifugal compressors, I strongly encourage you to check out our best-seller course, Centrifugal Compressors, Principles, Operation and Design. And don't forget to ask us for a coupon code to enroll in with a discount.